I can't believe it. For the first time in a long time, I actually agree with the rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Hey guys, welcome to Happy Wax TV. So yeah, I have to agree with Rotten Tomatoes on this one, the rating they gave, which I'll give in a little bit, but um, the reviews for this movie are mostly positive, which I would say is rightly so. I mean, this wasn't a, a great movie by any means, but it certainly wasn't a terrible movie. To kind of, you know what I mean? Like it's kind of, if you have a stack of like 20 movies, this movie would be somewhere in the middle, like right in the middle of the pile. So I mean, if, if you have to, you know, if you have to work your way down to it and if you get to it, that's great and you watch it, but if you don't have time to get to it and you never see it, I mean, there's no harm done. It's, it's kind of one of those movies where it's not like a must-see type film, but if you do watch it, I mean, I think you'll enjoy it. It's, it's got a little bit of everything in it, so it's more or less like a haunted house movie, and I'll tell you, there, there really hasn't been a lot of haunted house movies come out lately, or at least not that I'm aware of. Now, I do gauge my haunted house movies on this flick, House. I, I love this movie. I, I love the cheesy campiness of it, and it's just it's a classic. And uh, I kind of gauge all them like what I like. There's there's some serious haunted house movies like Amityville Horror and stuff like that. But what I'm talking about is when they they try to throw a little bit of comedy in there, like they did with House, and some serious moments and some scary moments, which is kind of what they're going for in this movie. And for the most part, I would definitely say it works. Um, it's directed by Travis Stevens. I believe this is his first full-length feature movie. Uh, he does have a documentary out that is, uh, I think it's a full-length feature, but uh, this guy mostly produces. If you go on his IMBD, he has got uh, just, I mean, years and years and years of, of producer uh, for different, all types of movies. So he's been around for quite a while. So, I, you know, finally he's taken a stab at directing. And, uh, you know, I think that the final product is actually pretty good. Um, it stars CM Punk. Uh, he plays Don Koch, uh, the husband. And then uh, Therese Kelly Dunn is his wife, Liz. And then Sarah Brooks plays Sarah, who I don't, well, I won't tell you who, what kind of what her character is right now. But, and then th those are pretty much the main, the main characters. It's just the three of them, really. And then Cooper the dog is in this movie, too. I'll tell you. Um, animals uh, are hit and miss uh, sometimes in movies, but this dog Cooper played his part to a T. It's kind of almost like like watching the thing, you know, the dogs in that movie, how how awesome they were, and they really brought the realism to to that, you know, the movie in the thing. And Cooper does the same here. There's certain scenes that he's in where you're, you're waiting for him to kind of break character or look. And, but he kills it. You know what I mean? Like when he sees things or when he's supposed to see things that aren't there, he's even his eyes go to it. So, I mean, it's, it's, it just brings more realism to the, to the film. And I, I really did like that part of it. So, but anyways, very quickly, um, the storyline, Don Cock tries to, uh, uh, reinvent, uh, run or sorry, renovate a rundown mansion, uh, with a sordid history, uh, for his growing family only to learn that the house has other plans. Okay. So basically that's a synopsis. First act is CM Punk, uh, comes to this house that he has bought in. He, he got in, he got in trouble. Okay. He's not, he's not the, the best guy going here. Um, he's a cheat. He's an ex-alcoholic. Um, in the job that he did, I think he invest people's money and he took a lot of it, their retirement savings. So he, but somehow he got some plea bargain or something and stayed out of jail. So anyways, he's trying to make amends and he's trying to start over with his wife. Okay. Cause they have a baby on the way. So he buys this, this giant house in this, this small little town, but it's a fixer upper. So he moves in. She doesn't come with him right away. I think she's two or we, two or three weeks behind just so he can go in and kind of renovate it and get it all up to snuff before they move in and have the baby. So the first act is basically just him. And it, the first act is, is more of a comedic uh, style where, you know, they've got like, you know, punching holes in the walls with the hammers and dust falling on his face. And, you know, he's trying to fix the pipes and they burst in his face and, and all this sort of stuff. And there's one scene where he puts drywall on the wall and it's, he's put it on backwards. I don't know if they did that intentionally or if they just didn't actually know. But it's just, it just shows him that he just trying to show that he's not a handyman, but he's going to struggle through this because he wants to show his wife sort of that he wants to get his shit together, right? So, and right at the, the end of the first act, 
uh, Sarah comes into the picture. Now she, we don't actually know where she comes from other than she's, you know, in the neighborhood. So I just assumed she was a neighbor um, and she starts flirting with them. And then, you know, one thing leads to another and then they end up sleeping together. Okay. And that's, that's kind of right at the end of the first act. And then the second act starts and this is where things get kind of, I guess, moving along a bit more. The first act is kind of slow, but it, it does have some funny moments. But the second act is where things kind of get going here and get a little stranger um, because you, you, you see the, I guess it's digression of his sanity. You know what I mean? When he comes there, he has good intentions. You know what I mean? And he's working hard and he's trying to get shit done. And then this house, it just, it's just wearing on him and he sees things and, and, I, and it's cool too, because like they, they do a really good job of making this house seem like it's alive. Like there's constantly ooze coming out of the, the you know, the light sockets or, or, or pus in the walls. And he, and he tries to, to, to paint this hole in the wall and, and the paint bubbles off it. Like, you know, cause there's this black goo coming from it and stuff like that. And they really do a great job of making this house seem like it has like a presence to it. Do you, do you know what I mean? And again, keep in mind, this is a low budget movie. Okay. This isn't some billion dollar movie. So, and I, I just thought they did a great job and I don't remember seeing any CGI in this movie. Um, there may be some just to touch up, but I, I think for the most part it's practical. So that really brought it home for me because you guys know how I love practical, but the, the second act is kind of cool. Do you know what I mean? This movie does chug along at a slower pace. Um, than most movies. Um, I wish they would have maybe edited it a little bit tighter just to kind of speed it up a bit. But I mean, most of the scenes work. You know what I mean? The second act, like I said, you, you get his his kind of, you know, where he starts to kind of lose it a little bit. But things start to get revealed. Do you know what I mean? And it makes sense. And I, I got thinking to myself, okay, this is going to be one of these movies where he's seeing all this shit, but he's not going to be able to prove it to people and they're going to end up thinking he's crazy. Right. Well, then the third act starts and that's totally not what happens. <laughs> so I don't, I don't want to give too many spoilers, but the third act is when his wife comes to the house. Okay. And then I, I will say this, um, like she sees the shit that's going on too, which, you know what I mean? Cause it's always frustrating. Cause I, I don't like horror movies where they try and make the main character look insane, but not insane to us, the audience, but insane to other like other people in the movie, like it happens all the time in horror movies. You know what I mean? Like they're trying to tell you that something's happening and nobody fucking believes them. Now I get in reality, if somebody came to me and said that the fucking house was trying to kill me, I would probably think they're crazy too. But the fact that these people don't even investigate it or go and look at it for themselves and just assume that this person's a fucking dumbass, like it's frustrating because it happens so much. And that's where I thought this movie was going to go, but it doesn't. So, I mean, that really saved it for me. But the third act is really cool, which I don't really want to talk about. But there's a lot of answers or questions that get answered in the third act. And uh, there's just, it's great because the wife gets involved and, you know, shit happens to her too. And I, yeah, I don't know, man. Like, it's a gory movie. It's not like super gory, but if you, if you do like gore, there's enough in there and it's practical. So, I mean, that... Like, again, that really helped me. So, and the story was pretty cool. It's definitely not original. You know what I mean? It's, it's about a haunted house. I mean, and, and the dwellings of the haunted house and the fact that the house doesn't want certain people in there. I mean, that's the same as every fucking haunted house movie, isn't it? So I don't know. I, I like this movie to give it a rating. Like I said, I'm going to, uh, agree with, uh, Rotten Tomatoes. They gave it, I think right now for the critics reviews, it's sitting about a 78%. I think that might be a, a smidge high for this movie, but I would definitely give it a seven. You know what I mean? Uh, a seven out of 10. I, I, again, when I first saw the trailer for this movie, I didn't do a review on it because I kind of hummed and hawed about it. But uh, yeah, I sat down this morning and gave it a watch and I was pleasantly surprised. And I only went to my phone once, so, <laughs> which, which says a lot because I like to go to my phone if I'm bored. And the only time I did go to my phone was during the first act. Like I said, there's some funny parts in there. But, and I know they're trying to character build and I, I do appreciate that, but the first act was kind of slow and I wish they would have tightened it up a bit. This movie is just over 90 minutes and I'm pretty sure that they could have cut probably at least five minutes out of this, uh, maybe even 10, you know, bring it down to like the 80 minute mark. I know that's short for, for a lot of movies, but if that's what you have to do to, uh, you know, to tighten it up a little bit and keep the pace going, which they definitely needed in the first, the first act, but Hey, it is what it is. So 
Um, but yeah, I like this. I like the story. Um, I would say it's definitely worth a watch. Um, again, it's one of those movies. It's right in the middle of your pile. So if you get to it and you watch it, you're probably going to like it. But if you don't get a chance to get to it and you never see it, eh, no harm done. <laughs> you know what I mean? But... You know, I would, if you get the chance, I would definitely say maybe give this one a watch. So anyways, if you have seen it because it's out now, let me know what you think of it. And if you haven't seen it, please go watch it. And then if you could come back and leave me some comments because I'm uh, curious to see what you guys uh, thought of this one. So again, it's first time director and CM Punk. I don't know if he's been in any other movies, but again, his acting is really cool. So, or pretty good, pretty good for the most part. So yeah, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Girl on the third floor, check it out, and as always guys, stay scared.